Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Um, it has been uh, a while between drinks as it normally is, um, but just wanted to get back on, give you guys a bit of an update on Ironman Texas. Um, my thoughts, feelings, um, I put a, little, a few things on like social media, um, but wanted to get a video just to give a bit more of my kind of background thoughts. Um, and then, yeah, a little bit more information about, you know, what's coming up in the next month or two. This video might be a bit chopping and changing. Um, there's going to be a few photos, a couple of little video clips, uh, a few video clips from Iron Man um, from their live feed. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of walk you through the day um, or a few days before the race, but then also the, the race itself. So those that won't remember, uh, I was actually meant to do Iron Man Texas in 2022, so last year. Um, and if you scroll back, there's a video basically explaining why I didn't make the start line there. Um, long story short, I caught COVID, got pretty unwell, uh, had the effects of that for about a month or so. But also it was at the time where you kind of had to prove a negative test to fly out to the, uh, out to the States. Um, and I was only like, I tested positive like three or four days before I was meant to travel and like just over a week before the race. So basically, um, yeah game over. This this year basically, um, as soon as I saw that Texas was going to be on the pro kind of circuit again, um, that was kind of a tick box for me. I definitely wanted to get out to the race, kind of felt like I had unfinished business already with that race. Flew out Monday, so about five days before the race. It should have been like a super easy travel, but um, yeah, we got an email the night before the flight um, basically saying that our flight was cancelled and the alternative we got was basically a short stopover through uh, Dallas. So Heathrow to Dallas and then Dallas to Houston. Um, long story short, delayed, missed flight, new flight, bag still in Dallas. It's yeah, long story, but long story short was that we arrived stupidly late, uh, early hours of Tuesday to our apartment in um in the woodlands um so not the ideal prep for an iron man but it is what it is um yes yeah, so then after that leading into the race it was just about doing the you know kind of the the step the day by day um tuesday was really fun i went down to urban cycles um in houston and <clears throat> i was picking up an envy well so envy uh, kindly have given me a, a disc wheel and also a front. So um, I was basically getting that set up ready to race. Uh, I'll pop a video of that in now. Um, but yeah, super, super happy to be riding that. And that was such a quick wheel, quick wheel on race day. Uh, in the week building up, I went for a couple of swims with Tom Davis, um, met up with Joe Skipper for a ride, which was super fun. Um, and we kind of just like actually rode around some of the old course roads. So some like really nice flowing roads, um, which yeah, it's a shame the race wasn't actually on those roads cause it's so, they were like so smooth, like not that many cars. Um, but that is what it is. Yeah, so then we basically just rolled through the week, um, you know, standard things. We did a pro briefing. We did a anti-doping chat, which at the time felt a bit strange that they were making us do a mandatory anti-doping. Um, but after the Colin Chartier stuff came out the week after, it completely made sense. Um, I'm not going to hit on that on this video, but uh, I think there's plenty of uh, athletes' opinions on that online. Um so yeah, we'll skip over that a little bit. Um, yeah, going into race day felt good. Uh, HRV numbers were good. Uh, felt like I'd recovered from the the terrible travel. Felt like I was, you know, in a good position to perform. Um, I'd been back running for about four weeks, three and a half, four weeks. Um, so was kind of quietly convincing myself that my run was in a really good position. <laughs> um, but that will probably hit on that in a second as well. Um, yeah, so basically the plan was to, a bit like I always do with races, um, I wanted to be at the front, I wanted to uh, get that feeling, get that sensation of 
being at the front of the swim, trying to get to the front of the bike, and then, you know, just racing the race a little bit, knowing what I'm physically possible, like capable of doing, and then you know, trying to put together the best marathon I physically can. Um, yeah, the day basically kind of planned out, panned out, planned out, panned out, the way that I wanted it to. Um, got a really clean start. I decided to start on the right-hand side um, just because I wanted clear water. Um, I wanted to try and see if I could get away. Um, kind of test the waters a little bit there. I knew that um, the Polish athlete, Robert, was going to be super strong on the swim as well. Um, I swam with him at Frankfurt last year. So, um, yeah, not surprised after like five, 600 meters to have him um, him with me. Um, unfortunately, um, I kind of thought we might be able to get away from people like Rudy, um, but I think he had a super strong swim, which um, all credit to him there. And also um, a first time pro athlete, a guy called Matthew, who ended up having a stormer of a race as well. He, um, he managed to get into the pack as well. So there was four of us out in front. Um, I tactically just led the swim. Um, I kind of felt like I was super in control. I didn't feel like I was working very hard. Um, I could have saved energy by, you know, letting someone else lead. Um, but I also was aware that, you know, you had the likes of Skipper, Hansen, and just a lot of strong runners um, who were going to be slightly off the back of the swim. And if I can extend that gap out in the swim, uh, that gives me more of a buffer not being one of the strongest runners uh, to some of those athletes and puts me in a better position for the rest of the race. So I'm happy to lead. Um, there hopefully might be a point where I feel like I can, you know, be more, a bit more tactical there if someone else is pushing the pace. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, had a super easy T1. Um, aim of the T1 was basically to get my heart rate down um, so that I was able to, uh, yeah, just ride super strong. Um, got onto the bike uh, and I didn't do anything crazy. I basically just sat sort of 15, 20 watts above what I wanted to average for the whole ride. Um, and I managed to actually gap uh, the three athletes I was with. Um, so I had a bit like a 45, 50 second gap um, after about 10K. And, and I kind of held that till about an hour, an hour and 10 into the bike. Um, when Rudy then surged to bridge the other guys back up to me. Um, that was kind of like semi-intentional. I wanted to kind of test the legs of, you know, anyone who'd come with me. Um, but, you know, retrospectively, it was kind of pointless because then we ended up riding together for the next, like, three, three and a half hours. Um, yeah, held really good power. Um, Rudy put a big surge in um, at, like, 110k, 115k into the bike. Um, and then caused some separation. Um, I ended up riding with Matthew for a bit. Um, and then on the last tailwind section, actually then backed off my power because I'd averaged like 315 watts at that point. And I knew that that was maybe a few watts higher than I planned to. Um, so I kind of just stayed there and just sort of tapped away around 300 and tried to just, yeah, get some nutrition in and, and set myself up the best possible way for the run. Um, and yeah, I I think, you know, tactically, could I have gone with the surges? Possibly. Should I have gone with them? Possibly. Um, but again, still, I still feel like I'm relatively like new to this kind of tier of racing and wanting to kind of just keep putting myself into the race um, and keep kind of just like testing myself. And then, you know, hopefully I'll have a bit more confidence in my run moving forward. And that's when I'll be able to really, you know, um, make decisions uh, to really, you know, hopefully fight for the podium, fight for the win. Uh, yeah, so on to the run. And I think this is where, like, my, not my frustration, um, I'm frustrated with myself because um, I know I'm capable of running a lot better than I have done so far in the last sort of few Ironmans I've done. Um, my run training has been pretty solid. Um, I know I'm capable of running the speeds that I need to run. And I think it's just about putting nutrition, uh, bike, uh, not bike ability, but bike kind of um, making that the effort feel easier. Um, and then obviously then putting it all into a race and then getting off the bike and feeling like I can then express 
the level of run that I know I have. Um, so I kind of went through like different patches on the run, kind of ran some air, like patches where I was like kind of where I wanted to run, you know, close to four minute Ks, just under four minute Ks. And then there were some patches where, you know, I, my, my Achilles and my, my solace and everything just sort of tightened up in one of my legs. And I felt like I was, you know, jogging and just trying to survive, um, which is super frustrating. Um, I ran just over three hours. I think it was 307, 306, 307. Um, but I kind of felt like I'm capable of running 250, sub 250 even. Um, so that's kind of where I need to keep working towards. Um, lost a few places. I was off the bike in fourth. And then I ended up falling down to 11th, which at like the North American champs isn't, you know, it's not a bad result, um, but it's definitely not where I want to be, um, you know, obviously trying to fight for, you know, world championship qualification, uh, podiums, um, that sort of thing is, is kind of my ambition. So um, I need to just keep chipping away and hopefully at, you know, the next event I can make a, a, a solid jump forward in terms of my run um but i definitely kind of got the reassurance that my swim bike is in a super super good place um texas on the bike especially was a super flat course um i have good power i have decent aero um but i definitely feel that i ride better on rolling courses um like one of my best rides last year was ironman wales which is a completely different course to texas a lot of time out the saddle, a lot of time out the TT bars. Um, so I think that's quite reassurance as well, reassuring as well, which I've now kind of pre performed well over multiple different bike courses over Ironman. Yeah, so I guess um, I'm going to try and wrap this video up a little bit now because I appreciate it's probably gone on a little bit too long um, and it's almost two weeks, well, over two weeks since I actually raced the race. Um, but yeah, Texas, super solid result, um, super solid first Ironman of the year. Um, my next kind of training block now is going to be focused, um, around Ironman Switzerland, which is in July. Um, I'm also going to hopefully race Challenge Well. I hope to see as many there and many of you in, uh, Fishguard as possible. And then, yeah, try and keep my head down and in Switzerland, I don't know what the start list is going to be like yet. Um, I don't know who else is going to be there, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to kind of trying to get to the front of the race again and, uh, yeah, really testing myself um, and seeing if I can, you know, outside shot of trying to bag a slot for Ironman World Champs in Nice, um, but the, the longer-term goal being to get to Kona next season. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully it hasn't been uh, too, too long. And yeah, if you've uh, enjoyed a little bit of what you've seen today, push that subscribe and that might enthuse me to uh, get some more regular videos out. So cheers, guys.